the Honorable Thomas B. Modley. Mr. President, members of Congress, Admiral Richardson, Vice Admiral Carter, distinguished guests, faculty, and staff of this national treasure of an institution, parents, families, and friends of the great class of 2018, thank you for being here to honor and celebrate this tremendous ac accomplishment, but more importantly, for putting your faith, hope, and prayers behind these young Navy and Marine Corps officers. Soon they will depart from this place to assume positions of massive responsibility defending our nation and contributing their intellect, passion, and skill to sustaining the most powerful and lethal maritime force the world has ever known and hopefully will ever know. Parents, Thank you for raising such outstanding citizens and sponsor families from Annapolis in this area. Thanks for picking up where those parents left off and opening your homes and providing comfort and support to this class over the last four years. <laughs> to the awesome class of 2018, Congratulations and relax. The hard part's mostly over for today anyway. No more panic attacks when you hear the 10 minute chow calls. No more worrying about the quality of your tuck at restriction musters. No more sitting at your desks in class A uniforms during room tours. No more cramming for final exams. No more alpha room inspection. You can cheer for any of these, by the way. And at least for you, ensigns, no more parade practices, parades, or platoon drill. Now, I'm very sorry, Marines, uh, but the joy of marching and parades that you all came to love in your four years here at the Academy is going to continue for you for many more years. But. I guarantee that your future parades will have a level of precision that you probably did not experience here. <laughs> Class of 2018, you will soon discover that life away from the academy will be very, very different. Just imagine, you now can learn what it is actually like to sleep under your covers rather than on top of them. You can also have an opportunity to expand on the passionate love of the ballet and opera that you developed during the Distinguished Artist Series at Alumni Hall. And perhaps most importantly, you will finally have the time and independence to prepare some of your favorite meals from King Hall in your own homes. Just think culinary expressions like mystery meatballs, King Hall meatloaf and kale wraps don't have to be distant fond memories. I recommend you contact the supply officer for more information on this, but please, no more death threats about kale wraps. <laughs> but on to more serious matters, because that's what this day is about. It was 35 years ago on this very day, May 25th, that I was sitting where you are. And I walked across this very stage and received my diploma from the Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable John Lehman. It was a time in history not unlike the one we are in today. After years of neglect and insufficient defense budgets, our Navy was just beginning to receive the huge shot in the arm that it required to face down the growing Soviet threat. The national resolve, inspired and embodied by President Reagan at that time, at the time of my commissioning, rebuilt our military, and most importantly, our Navy, so that the Soviet Union had no choice but to retreat 
and eventually collapse into the annals of its own inglorious past. In it In its wake came the liberation of millions of people and nations who suffered under communist oppression behind the Iron Curtain. One of those nations was Hungary, a place where my own father escaped in the late 1940s to flee Soviet-imposed tyranny. I recall this point in history to you today not because it's personal for me, but because of its relevance for you. Just as I was fortunate to serve under President Reagan, you should recognize how fortunate you are to be serving today under a commander-in-chief who believes what President Reagan believed, that our national security <laughs> that our national security should be guided by the clearest should be guided by the clearest of principles. That principle is peace through strength. This is not a political tagline. It is a geopolitical truth. It is particularly true for a nation such as the United States with our broad global interests and important friendships all around the world, and our fundamental desire to see our people and the people of the world prosper under the guiding lights of individual liberty and human dignity. Weakness in pursuit of such lofty aspirations invites aggression, and it always will. As you are commissioned today, be grateful that the American people through their elected representatives in Washington, from the President to the Congress, recognize this fact and have committed the resources to give you what you need to deter our adversaries or to dominate and defeat them if necessary. I can assure you, not every nation in the world stands up for its principles in this way, nor do they invest the resources to make it so. Second. Just as my classmates and I never saw the demise of the Soviet Union coming in 1983, you may also be surprised at the good that can come to the world through what you will be doing every single day as officers in the armed forces of the United States. You may not recognize this fully in the routine of your daily jobs, but as long as you lead and inspire a strong Navy and Marine Corps team, one that is prepared for any adversary, I guarantee you that some significant and world-altering good will come of it over time. In fact, I am certain that as you look back on your own careers, no matter what direction they take, 35 years from now, just as I am doing nostalgically today, you will find that some symbol of oppression, not unlike the now extinct Soviet Red Star, will have been relegated to the dustbin of history because of what you did to sustain the strength and the lethality, lethality of the United States Navy and Marine Corps. It will happen because, as we have learned through history, tyranny, tyranny and oppression cannot survive contact for long against a powerful military force, one that is anchored by a people and an officer corps of high moral, moral character. Officers who, in addition to their courage, also maintain a passion for peace and prosperity for all the citizens of the world. That is who you are. And the world you are entering today as officers in the United States military is going to be a much better place for it. In closing, let me say that although this is a cru truly great day in your lives, it is unlikely to be in the top 10 of your greatest days in uniform. Rather, you will find those greatest days and the moments when you see the people you have led, trained, educated, mentored, tutored, commanded, and yes, even reprimanded at times, perform well beyond your expectations. As officers in the United States military, you are given tremendous responsibility to respect and protect those placed under your command. The American people entrust you with their sons and daughters 
and they place their security and the security of our nation in your hands. Do not expect to be loved by everyone for this, even though it may happen on occasion. As Secretary Mattis is fond of saying to all of us who are now honored to be serving in the Pentagon, quote, your job is to protect the nation. So I commend to you this following piece of advice to make this important and what you will find an often difficult job far easier on yourselves. That advice is this. Don't ever worry about being loved for what you do. Rather, love the country you are asked to defend. Love the Constitution you are about to pledge your lives to protect and defend. And most importantly, love the people you have been privileged to lead. Make sure they eat before you do. Care about their families as much as you do your own. Be vested in their successes more than your own individual accomplishments, and nurture their careers more than you pursue your own advancement. Value their lives to the point that you will always consider their safety and security in every decision you make. And you will do this best by making sure they know how to fight and how to win. It is only through this level of servant leadership that you will maximize and empower those you will lead to meet the demands they face in this dynamic century. It will accrue tremendous personal satisfaction to you during your time of service. It will foster truly great moments that will make the elation you are feeling today seem almost trivial. This is the kind of satisfaction, the kind of job satisfaction, that only service and the armed forces of the United States of America can provide. So prepare yourselves to experience it over and over and over and to treasure it every single time. Officers of the class of 2018, you are embark about to embark on the journey of your lives. Your service is noble. Your service is just. Your ser service will make this country and the world a better place. Today, we thank you in advance for your leadership and the sacrifices each of you will make to keep us safe and free. And today, be assured, we love you. So I'm going to see if this works. Class of 2018, go Navy! Thank you.